You guys catch the new hit reality show Sarah Palin did. It's called the GOP 2012 race. This is like a reality show. There are media outlets that kind of create this reality show, this intrigue, and who's going to be the next flavor of the week. I agree with half Governor Palin. This is one heck of a reality show. And the flavor of this week is Chris Christie. After his speech last night at the Reagan Library, he never gave a flat out no when a supporter asked him to run. So he continues flirting. But whatever he decides, he's already stealing everyone's thunder and deep pocketed donors are holding on to money waiting for a decision. Meanwhile, half of Republicans, half I said, want another candidate in the race. Front runner Rick Perry is feeling the heat today, some damage control for calling his opponents heartless on immigration last week. I probably chose a poor word to uh, explain that. And I was, um, you know, I, I was probably a bit uh, over passionate by using that word, and it was inappropriate. You never know what's going to happen next on this reality show. Joining me now, Jamal Simmons, a Democratic communications consultant and political analyst, David uh, Drucker, a staff writer on Roll Call, and Aaron McPite political, national political reporter for Rio Clear Politics. Thanks to all of you for joining me tonight. Aaron, half of Republicans want another candidate in this race. What do you make of that? That they're not satisfied with this field yet. And I think they're just beginning to see whether or not they're comfortable with some of the front runners like Rick Perry, like Mitt Romney. And they're not falling in love yet. They may toward the end, but they wanted another candidate in all along. So that's why you're still seeing this courting of Chris Christie, even though he's still unlikely to run. May not be falling in love, Jamal. They don't even seem like they want to date any one of these guys. 50% are saying, bring me somebody else. Well, Reverend, you remember uh, the 2003, 2004 campaign where you were involved and you were running for president. It was like that for the Democrats. We had a hard time trying to find a candidate that we liked. Dean was up and Lieberman was up. Uh, my old boss, Wesley Clark, got in the race. He didn't work out. Everybody kept uh, fishing around, and we ended up with a candidate that I think everyone thought was a good candidate, but maybe didn't have the same way to connect with voters as maybe, uh, you know, as George Bush did, and certainly didn't have the same way to connect with voters as Barack Obama does. And so I think Republicans are on the verge of having that same issue with Mitt Romney. They may just end up with the guy who's the last one standing when they get over all their flirtations with everyone else. Well, I took care of Wesley Clark for you. But David, <laughs> uh, let me ask you, when you see Anita Perry coming out explaining her husband's poor debate performance, let me show you what she says. He has never had a debate class nor debate coach in his life that I know of. He's going to be better prepared this time. He's going to, um, in fact, our son is 28, and he said, Mom, when they do the debate prep for the next debate, I want to be there. Now, David, isn't that little uh, uh, strange? Guy comes out, tough cowboy, remind me of when I was growing up a kid, rawhide. And now his wife's got to make excuses on why he can't debate and his 20-year-old kid got to come help prep him. I mean, doesn't that well, look a little problematic? Well, it might, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal. It's standard to trot the wife out to try and humanize the candidate. I think the thing to remember with Rick Perry is that he hasn't been in the race that long. He has never been vetted at this level as a national candidate, and, and therefore I don't think we know for sure if he's going to end up maintaining his lead in this race and secure the nomination or if he's going to tank because there's so much about him that we don't know. Um, and, and this is pretty standard. When you jump into the presidential field, everything about you is picked apart. I think one of the reasons that Mitt Romney is benefiting is because whatever we know about him that we don't like, there's nothing else to learn. He's in the position he's in, and we know everything there is about him that, that we could possibly need to know because he went through this four years ago. And for Rick Perry, he gets into the race late, and he finds out what it's really all about, and that's why I'm not even sold that if any other candidate got into this race that Republicans are pining for five minutes later, they wouldn't be disappointed when their opponents picked apart everything in their record we don't yet know about. Right. Well, that is true. But let me ask you this. Uh, uh, well, let me put this one to you, Aaron. Don't you have to wonder when Sarah Palin 
keeps being, you know, the question being raised about being president, and she comes back and explains the presidency like this. Oh. Does a title shackle a person? Are they someone like me who's maverick? You know, I do go rogue and I call it like I see it and I don't mind stirring it up. Is a title and is a campaign too shackling? Does that prohibit me from being out there, um, out of a box? Now, isn't being president a little more than just a title? I mean, she acts as though, you know, it's just a title change. It, I mean, you're talking about, would you have someone that thinks that being president is just a title as opposed to being unshackled? Would you want her answering the phone three in the morning with a world crisis? Right. It's obviously a very big job, the nation's top job. But I think what you're seeing from her is her foreshadowing her answer to her supporters, which is that she's probably not going to run. Now, plenty of people have thought all year that she's not going to run. She's not doing any of the things that, that candidates tend to do as they're getting ready to run for president. Now, she's a non, she would be a non-traditional candidate, but she seems to be telegraphing a message that she doesn't want to do it. So she's preparing those supporters who are going to be disappointed, it sounds like. Well, let's look at the numbers, though. Not only uh, do we have a problem with Republicans, with unemployment as high as it is, with the economy as bad as it is, let's look at the numbers in Ohio, for example. President Obama, head to head with Mitt Romney, wins 44 42. Uh, then, if you go President Obama against Rick Perry, 44 41. Uh, Pennsylvania, Obama, 45. Romney, 43. Pennsylvania, Perry, 46. Romney, 40. So even with all of the problems the president is facing, with the economic problems, clearly high unemployment, in critical states, Jamal, the president is still ahead. It's tight, but ahead. You would think uh, at the peak of all of these Republican debates that these polls would not be nearly this close, even given the president an edge in these states. You know, you would think so, but what the president has in his advantage is he's got a united base, despite all the stories about the conflict going on with different communities. He's got a very united base. He also, he, he's not facing a primary challenge. And every single president to run in modern American history without a significant primary challenger has won re-election. It's a huge benefit for the president. I think you can't count him out. But for the Republicans, they've got a couple of problems. They've got the fact they're not so thrilled with their front runner, and they've got this Tea Party fringe that's going to cause them a lot of trouble with the middle of the electorate. Let me ask you, uh, Aaron, is Chris Christie going to run? I would say no. I mean, you know, there could be an 11th hour decision. He could change his mind. He's still listening to people. But if you take him at his word over the last year, it's, it's a no. David, is Chris Christie going to run? No. And no. And no. <laughs> well, Jamal, I read the Huffington Post, I know your answer, but tell everybody else, is Chris Christie going to run? Uh, I don't think he's going to run. I think it's just too late for anybody to get in this race who's not already in. And at the end of the day, all, you know, there's a bunch of stuff we talked about in the, in the piece about why he, it's too late for him. I just don't think he's got the gut. I just don't think he's got the fire in the belly to get up every day and go out there and do the hustle that it takes to become president of the United States. Now, what are we going to see in terms of the fire in the belly that he might show that he showed with firing teachers and changing the budget? I mean, when he, if he ran, wouldn't he have to defend all of that? I mean, here's a guy who has shown no problem bullying teachers and bullying people that raises questions. It would be an interesting debate to see him on the stage screaming and hollering and stomping. It would be the great image for the Republican Party. All that's really interesting uh, before the campaign, but when you're in the middle of a presidential campaign, the one thing people want from the president is solid temperament. They want somebody whose finger can be on the button and they don't have to worry about it getting jumpy. And uh, Chris Christie does not look like he's got that level head that people typically look for in a president. Jamal, David, and Aaron, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ahead, Alabama's anti-immigration law. Why it's a